Good morning, good morning to all of the kings and the queens, the people of the most high God. God bless each and every one of you who is under the sound of my voice on this blessed day. Every day that the Lord make it is good to us and we will rejoice in it and we will be glad. But we are thankful that the Lord has allowed us one more opportunity to enter, come on into his house and to enter into his house with praise and with thanksgiving and with expectations that God is going to do something in and through us today that we have not experienced before. If you look forward to a love encounter with the Lord every single time you enter into his house, that's exactly what you're going to find. So come on in people of God, hallelujah. The table is spread, there is a feast going on and the banquet table is before you and it has everything on it that you need. You've been asking God for some things. You've been praying over some things and it seems like there's been a delay, but God says in the time, hallelujah, when the enemy thinks he's got you, he will prepare a table before you, even in the presence of your enemy, including Satan. And so God has on this table, everything you need. What is it that you need from the Lord today? Why don't you come to his table and eat? And if you eat of his word, I can guarantee you this one thing is that you will not go away empty, hungry, and your appetite unfulfilled. But you will find everything to appease that appetite, to calm the raging spirits and the raging thoughts in your mind. You will be able to then cast down any thoughts and imaginations that exalt itself up against the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the knowledge of of his word about what your covenant rights is as well as the knowledge of the authority and the power that you have in Jesus Christ. We are not defeated people of God, but if we make our resolve that we are in God's army and that we are well equipped. If you have been a part of the process of putting on the whole armor of God, you will be able, as the Bible always says, to stand up against every wow of the enemy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But my, I just, um, I think taught a lesson to pulling off and putting on. We were talking about the things that God wants to uh, clothe us with, if you will, spiritually speaking. Hallelujah. And we, but we are, we got on some things that needs to be replaced. We got on some garments that we need to be replaced. The garments of heaviness need to be replaced with the, uh, uh, and the spirit of heaviness need to be placed with the oil of joy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And that garment of praise. And so we need to pull off some things. Glory be to God, that old clothing, meaning that old mindset and, and what's been engulfing you. Glory be to God, which, which what has been dominating your thought life that is not in alignment in the word. We need to strip those clothes off and put on this whole armor of God. For the whole armor, he says, is able to withstand every fiery dart of the enemy. And if you're a child of God, glory be to God, and you, I know that you have been experiencing some darts coming your way, some attacks coming your way. Every time you look that you're going up, something else comes. But I'm telling you, you all, that is just part of our our assignment. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord and we are his target. But a soldier who who has in his mind that he cannot lose, he can keep on fighting. And that's what God has already proclaimed that we are winners. We're already on the winning side, but that don't mean that we don't have to fight. Come on somebody, because the tax is going to come. So welcome to Kingdom Life Christian Center Sunday morning service. Glory be to God. I am so excited about what God is doing, what he has done that has not been manifest for me and for you and those things that he has already done. Those things that God uh, has not that has not materialized yet in our lives does not mean that they are not there. Every sincere God uh, uh, prayed prayer and every prayer that is 
according to his will is already an answer prayer. It's just that the manifestation of that thing may not have come to pass yet. But if we stay true, trust in God beyond all else, beyond our own thoughts, beyond our own emotions, we will be for sure that that is going to come to pass in our life. Do you believe it? I believe it. And I'm not telling you something that Pastor Betty don't have to participate in. I have to also believe that God is going to be true to his word. They that put their trust in the Lord, he will never let be ashamed. So hold on soldiers, even if you're a tired soldier, hold on, no tired soldier. You got the Lord's shoulder to lean upon when you feel weak and in your battles, when you get weary, he let him your strength be. And we are thankful for you today. But those of you who are coming back, hallelujah, once again, Pastor Betty is grateful. We want to say, come on into the house. And for those of you who are here for the very first time, we would like to say welcome to uh, just one of the churches that is on the move of God in this last hour, Church of Jesus Christ, a church where there is no shenanigans going on. This church, Kingdom Life Christian Center, we have made it a, our, our mandate that we, it's not going to be a perfect place. No place on this earth will be. Because we are imperfect people. When we arrive at a place, it becomes imperfect. What we're saying is that we're striving for perfection. This place is going to be a place where as the leader of this house and the prophetic voice of this house, and, and the Lord says, calls us in one part of the scriptures, the angel of the house. We are, uh, are determined that as much as possible that we're going to keep the atmosphere, uh, atmosphere that is conducive to love, an atmosphere that is um, not going to be personality stricken. Hallelujah. Yes, you're going you, members of Kingdom Life, you're going to love Pastor Betty. You're going to honor me according to as the word says, but you're not going to lift me up as God. You're going to look to God at the end of the day. He is your one. I am the only, I am a vessel and a shepherd that has been given the assignment to protect you, to perfect you, to build you up, to equip you, and to empower you, and to point you to the perfect man, which is Jesus. And I do that by influence and example and not by force. So Although you love me, although you honor me, you will not give the glory to me because the glory only belongs to the Lord. So at this church, we are not personality stricken. No matter who we invite to come and speak, we want you to, yes, honor the gift that God gave them, uh, gave to those people and honor their gift. Even you can uh, look up to them and, and they could be a mentor to you as I can be. But we, at the end of the day, we want you to look at Jesus because flesh fails, but God and the Lord, he never fails. And so for those of you who are here for the very first time, this is the type of church we are inviting you to come on in. We are inviting you to come on in to be embraced by God love, to come in and have a love encounter with the Lord, to learn how to go up in praise and worship when there is no music, to learn how, hallelujah, to take the word of God as the final authority in your life. And even when your flesh don't agree with it, even when you naturally can't even agree with the word, that you made your resolve, that the word is true above all else, let God be true and everything else a lie, that you would uh, then discipline yourself to come into alignment with God's word. Glory be to God. But the peaceable, uh, it says, uh, for the chastisement of the Lord at the beginning does not seem, uh, uh, it's not glorious, it's not uh, well received, but he said, if you just embrace it, it will bring forth the peaceable fruit of righteousness in your life. So hallelujah, you know, as a parent, if you're a parent or you have ever had to discipline someone as a supervisor, it doesn't feel good, but it's necessary because why? For the upbuilding of the kingdom. So we ask you, if you are here for the very first time, we want to let you know you have a warm, 
seat of welcome awaiting you. Jesus is here. The Holy Spirit is ready to move and minister to you. This is a safe environment, and this is an environment that is conducive to mature you so that you can grow up. Glory be to God. Get to your destiny. Reach your highest call and be a, an ambassador for Jesus Christ. That's what we are doing. Building that man up from the inside out. So welcome to all of Kingdom Life, to my partners. I so love you all. I'm not going to stop saying it. Hallelujah. And I know you don't uh, you don't desire that I say it or need me to say it. You're going to support whether or not, but I am thankful that the Lord has connected us in the spirit. And that's why Pastor Betty is uh, daily asking the Lord, what does this church need to be doing? Hallelujah. In the last hour, because this is good soil, Lord. And everybody who is um, uh, planting, if you will, or sowing into this soil. We want to make sure this soil is conducive to bring forth a harvest so it will manifest in their lives. I pray for you. I cover you. I speak your name out as the Holy Spirit is given up to me to do. I have you in my mind and my thoughts. And so for my support as well, wishes into all of you, whether you're doing that monetarily or whether it's through prayer, whether it's through sharing of these broadcasts, whether it's through uh, praying and interceding for us, we thank you. Hallelujah. So without any further ado, we are in the last part of this series entitled, This is the Year, Your Double Portion. I thought in the first month I was going to be done. That was a faith word we got for our church to look forward to, to believe for, for this year. Yes, it was a very daring and uh, a very aggressive move to be speaking such a positive thing in the midst of what we were dealing with when God gave us this word. And that was, we was at the height of the pandemic. We were at the height of racial uh, in, inequality and injustice. We were at the height of political uh, 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 challenges and, and struggles and fighting. We were at the height of a lot of things and then don't put on top of that natural disasters and a huge loss unemployment and and your list go on. And when I went to ask the Holy Spirit, what word was I to put before the people to believe for? He said, this is their year of the double portion if they would dare to believe it. And I'm like, whoa, Lord, that is kind of like, that is really something for them to believe. But that's what faith is. It's believing something that is beyond your capability. It's believing God for something that Glory be to God that you cannot produce. It is God's word being made manifest, which is not predicated on, on the conditions of our time or the conditions of the world. We live above that. And in our next series, which will be next Sunday, come back. We're going to be talking about that. How we, as the church, we, as its offspring, we have another story. And uh, I'm not going to give you all that. Come on back. And uh, and we got a wonderful series that is ahead. You were made for the high place. I'm going to go ahead and release it. But that I'm not going to give you any more than that. Just come on back. And we ask you that if you have not subscribed to our channel, why don't you go ahead and do that? Click on uh, our subscription box right below here. Or it's a little bitty box here. If you hover over USC Kingdom Life, you can click that as well and subscribe or go beyond this box and look at this red subscription button, and we are thanking you in advance. Like, share, and comment. So we are uh, asking you uh, to, uh, we're going to go in prayer, then we're going to read the word of God and go right into our lesson for today. Hallelujah. And Pastor Betty is, is in the recruitment mode. We have uh, multiple positions in Kingdom Life Christian Center that needs to be filled. And uh, there are some critical ones that we are praying and asking God to send. So if you've been saying, I need the place to hook up and connect with, I've been in church, but I, 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 I'm not connected right now. I'm in the interim of trying to find a church home. Why don't you give us a try? Uh, we're looking for uh, specifically these critical roles, um, a, a musician, Glory be to God, even a praise. I'm going as far as believe God for praise and worship. A leader, one person, or, or multiple people. Someone who could do praise and worship and that musician that could come together and partner and they will flow in the Holy Spirit. And then we're looking for some ministers who you saying, I'm just sitting here with my license and I don't have anything to do. I'm not really connected to a work. And you want to uh, help uh, us um, 
spread the gospel, set the captive free, then why don't you inbox us at klcc1207 at yahoo.com. This summer is coming and we want to take full advantage of this. We want to hit the streets running and we need multiple hands to do that. So welcome to the virtual service. Glory be to God for now. Yes, and we are not going to question God. We're just going to continue to do the work that he calls for us to do. With all my spirit, dear Heavenly Father, here we are once again coming into your house, gathering in your name to worship you. We praise you, mighty God, Holy Father, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the one who sits high and look low, the one who sits on the great white throne, glory be to God, who have eyes before the throne, going to and forth in the earth, beholding all that is good and all that is evil, the just one, the holy one, the magnificent one, hallelujah, the true potentate, the, the alpha and the mega, the beginning and the end, hallelujah, the excellent God, hallelujah, the lifter of my head, glory be to God, our rock and our salvation. God, we thank you today. Day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the gift of salvation that come, came through your son, Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus, for being the sacrificial sacrifice that was once and for all uh, uh, appeased the Lord and atoned for man's sin. Oh, what a mighty God that we serve. We thank you for the twins called grace and mercy that goes and but goes behind us every single day following us, pursuing us, glory be to God, helping us to fulfill our assignment and to fulfill our purpose so that we can get to our destinies. To that God who is sovereign, hallelujah, and there is none that is greater to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hallelujah, to the one who is our healer, the one who is our deliverer, the one who is our, our battle axe, the one who is our real guard, the one, hallelujah, is our revealer, and hallelujah, our help and our strength. To the one who, where we look to the hills from whence cometh our help, and our help come from the Lord. To that God, hallelujah, who cannot be named. To the I am that I am, we crown you today. Father God is majesty. And we say, hallelujah, reign and rule in this earth, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And God, we come into this place and we gather in our name. We are raising up our hands in total adoration unto you and in total surrender to you, Lord. Here we are. We say, here we are. We surrender our will. We surrender our way unto you. And we say, have your way in our lives. Be Hallelujah, what you want to be in our lives. And we come uh, humbly before you and we say, yes, Lord. Now, spirit of the living God, hallelujah, we thank you for being in the midst right now. Hallelujah. We thank you for being in every living room and every kitchen and every bedroom and every hospital room and in every uh, prison cell and every office. Hallelujah. In every car, wherever the people are listening at this broadcast, we thank you that the power of the Holy Spirit is touching them right now in their area of need. Glory be to God. You're drying up the tears, God. You're bringing joy to where there's been sorrow. Hallelujah. You're giving hope to the hopeless, oh God. In the name of Jesus, you are healing bodies. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are increasing the will to live to, to somebody. You're giving them hope to live again, Lord. We thank you, hallelujah, that you are uh, delivering somebody from substance abuse, God, that they can have, they didn't have a uh, control anymore over doing it and they don't want to do it anymore but God they're calling on you and said Lord would you help me and we thank you that you are there to help them right now in the name of the Lord Jesus lift up your people lift up every hung down head in the name of Jesus <clears throat> give them strength to stand in these last days and in these evil times in the name of the Lord Jesus Hallelujah. Strengthen your people, your kings and your queens, and let them know who they are in you. Hallelujah. Raise them up to the place. Hallelujah. That they're supposed to be at. Hallelujah. Helping them to cast down imaginations and all the high things. Hallelujah. We <clears throat> come and we uh, decree and declare today that that their struggles, hallelujah, is ending in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we thank you, God, that the God of the breakthrough, ha, glory be to God, is visiting every home right now 
in the name of our Lord. And God, we thank you, Holy Spirit. Now you are already in this place. You are already in where they are. And we pray that this word of God will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any demonic force that tried to hinder it. We, we curse distraction. We prohibit it right now in the name of Jesus. We prohibit any thing that come against this broadcast and your word because the word is so powerful sharper than any two-edged sword and it is able to go in every home and make the crooked places straight make their path smooth in the name of the lord jesus hallelujah there is a word of god in my mouth and i ask you holy spirit think through my mind Speak through these lips of clay that the word of God will go forth unhindered, unchecked by any demonic force. Give me the voice of an orator in the name of Jesus and with authority in, in this word. Hallelujah. Glory be to God that it will break the yoke. It will remove the yokes. Hallelujah. Destroy the yokes and remove every burden in the lives of your people. Now I sit down in my flesh so that you can stand up so mightily in me. Hallelujah. And that the demonstration of the spirit, hallelujah, your job, Holy Spirit, and you're going to do it, is that the demonstration of the spirit will follow this word preach. No longer just good messages, but we want the power of God, hallelujah, behind this word to go forth in the lives of those hearers. And it will produce what we are preaching in their lives so that the God of the Bible will come up and be alive and what they're reading, they will all, uh, they will begin to say, ah, look at what I've been reading for years now being made manifest in my life and becoming real to me. This we pray, this we believe, and this we receive, and this we call it all done. Come on, somebody, say amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now we're going to turn your attention. <clears throat> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm looking for more water. Hallelujah. We're going to turn your attention to the book of Psalm 62. Truly, my soul waited upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He, uh, he only is my rock and my salvation, and he is my defense. Glory be to God. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you imagine mischief against the man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a, a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Salah. That means pause and think on that. My soul wait, thou alone, thou only upon God for my expectation. You're, come on, y'all is from him. How many of you, your expectation been in somebody else, been in some other thing happening? Put your expectations in him and him alone. Glory be to God. He is, he, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and I shall not, come on, say it. I shall not be moved. Don't let the enemy move you out of your place. Don't let him move you away from your testimony. Don't let him move you away from your trust and your belief in God. Hallelujah. Let your soul speak to your soul. Command your soul. Soul, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I will boast, make my soul boast in the Lord. Make your soul boast in the Lord. I know you don't feel it. Come on, somebody. I know the situations that you are in right now may not look like, hallelujah, that I can even put my mouth together to boast in the Lord because I don't understand what he's doing. But if you don't understand what he's doing, trust his heart for you. And I dare you. I dare you. I give you this challenge today. Go beyond your emotion. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice high like a trumpet and make your boast in the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord your God. And watch and see don't things begin to break in your life. My, um, He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge. Come on, somebody. What is say? My refuge is in God. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. I could go on and read that whole chapter. You all, I give you that assignment to continue to read from um, 
uh, verse number eight, all the way down to verse number 12, because eight is good. Trust in him at all times. Come on, all times, not just through the good times, not when things going in your, look like in your favor, all times. Trust in the Lord, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Salah, that word Salah means, I want you to pause. Think on what's just been said. Because it's profound. The reason he wants you to, to pause and think on that. I mean, meditate on it. And it is time for us to start meditating the word of God. I'm talking about the Pastor Betty as well. It's time for us to start meditating. Because it's not enough having read it. It's not enough having spoken it. Not enough having just confess it. We got to believe in it. We got to trust in it. And we got to stay established in it until what we are reading, what we are believing, and what we're trusting in comes to pass. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I could stay right there, but we, I do got a lesson to teach y'all on tonight. We, we are going to be ending this series. We we started uh, uh, we started last week with this is the year your double portion. And we were talking about creativity. We're going to finish with that. And we have two more that we are going to give to you all. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that we can get all of this in in the next 30, 35 minutes. You all, if you've got to come back and you've got to uh, uh, listen at this in parts, do just that. Always see things through in its entirety. Uh, don't don't have uh, complete things because most of the time your, your, your blessing or what you need to hear is almost at the end. And the enemy said, you've been listening too long. You ain't heard what you want yet. Don't let them say that. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, so people of God, come on, let's go and get your Bible, get your paper, get your pencil, and come on and let's go before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hear what he has given to this prophet to give to you all today. Amen. Amen. We praise the Lord for all of you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So uh, we know some of you are note takers. So go ahead and get your um, get your. So first, and then we also want to say happy Memorial Day to all of those veterans who have served your country and served us. We salute you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we are in memory of all of those who have passed on and those who are still here, who have served this country well. Hallelujah, you um, uh, are one of the reasons why we are enjoying some of the freedom that we are enjoying now. So we salute you to those who I do know, um, to some of my family members, to Cornell Hempill for his service, um, to Jerry uh, Evans, his service, uh, to Shavora Stewart and her services, to... Um, uh, my friends, Pastor and uh, First Lady Betty Glenn, to their service, to Elizabeth uh, Barry and her services, and just to all of you, those are the people who I do know. I know there is a host of you. Sometimes you'd be saying, oh, I didn't never know you was a veteran, but to all of the veterans, hallelujah, whether I know you or not, hallelujah, we are saluting you today, and you are in our memories and our thoughts. Glory be to God. <clears throat> so happy Memorial Day to all of you. So we're talking about this is the year the double portion in regard to creativity. If you had not listened to last week and the week before, go back and listen. Now, if I'm going to give you all uh, this disclaimer uh, for the last past two um, uh, videos that we, the services we've been doing, there are some things that went on the first one. I think that was part 17. Uh, somehow or another, it ended. It ended, and then uh, only a third of my message was preached. We tried to pick it up last week where we left off the week prior, where it was cut off. And then last week, um, the music was overshadowing my voice for some reason. And so for the first part, all the way up through the reading of the scripture, you can barely hear my voice, but stick with it if you need to Fast forward to the main message. It's all clear. You don't hear any music. So go back and do that. Amen. And so then at the end, also at the invitation for, for the altar, you also hear music overshadowing my voice. But you all just 
hear, hear the part that you can hear. And then uh, you'll hear some of the things that uh, we uh, talked about in regard to creativity. So now I'm going to go ahead and revisit a few things, which is the definition. And we talked about why is this whole thing about creativity? Why, why should we be asking about creativity? Because our father was the, he's the general of creation. He created all things in the in uh, Genesis, you talk you talk about everything that he created, and he said, "Behold, it was all good." He is the one that could create. He is, um, but we talked about how Satan is not do not have creative abilities any longer. He uh, have have uh, lost all of that, and all he does is steal. He steals ideas, and when we talking about in this world, we have seen over. Uh, uh, over our time, we have seen many people who have created some great inventions uh, that we are now enjoying, the light bulb, electricity, um, you name it. Um, they have created these things, these vehicles now that we are using uh, to broadcast the message over social media and all these kinds of things. And they have had some good ideas and some creative ideas. And we were talking about how that that is great. But, but these things are supposed to be uh, in the forefront of all of this should be the people of God. Why? Because we have been given an extra endowment, if you will, of uh, God has blessed all men, the airplane and all these inventions. All of that knowledge did not just come through man himself. God created man in a God class. Now, before man fell, he didn't take back all of that. His man is his man. And because... Man has a part of God in him, whether he follow God's or not. He still is the man that God created. And he breathed into man's nostril. Man became a living spirit. He didn't just make him alive to walk around and to breathe, but he made him a creative being, made him uh, to, supposed to have dominion. He just lost it. And, and so uh, when, when uh, Adam lost it, it didn't mean he lost all of the, the nature that God breathed into him. But as a Christian believer, you have a heightened level of the things uh, that God put into you. You have that same level that Adam had before he fell, which is creative abilities. That means that you have the ability to create answers and solutions to things. And uh, that is at a greater, um, what I want to say, success level, if you will, or greater uh, uh, revealing level where some of the things that man create that is maybe uh, half of the solution, God can give you the whole solution, if that makes any sense. That means that the hidden truths, the mysteries that is hidden from the world, as he told his disciples, I give it to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. They don't know the mysteries of the kingdom. They can't. So we know God's original plan. We know what he wants to have happen in this time that we're living in right now. Solutions. Maybe they have created some things, naturally speaking, like electricity, like both. But these, the, the things that is plaguing the spirit part of man is what is the trouble in the world today. And the only solution that you can get that is going to be sustainable solution, that is going to be the solution that is going to be long lasting and is going to be uh, sometimes defying natural laws, you only can do that at, th through the spirit of God. And so I, we were talking about the ability, the creative ability that God wants is to be using his people, first of all, to be the ones who are coming up with these solutions. And I believe that was the original plan. But because we fell down on the job, things still had to be done. But I'm saying that although that they have created some great things, there's still some holes in it. I, I, I still believe, I still believe right now that there's someone out there who has tapped into the download and tapped into the Holy Spirit. And he has given them uh, the cure to cancer. He's given them the cure to some of the ailments that we are dealing with. All of these ailments are, are, are sometimes self-inflicted and they are... are a result of some shortcut that man has taken in life or for the sake of what the enemy built his kingdom on, and that is money. And so what am I saying? God has a way 
to get to the people of God answers that need to happen in this world. The solution. Now we we have we we are praying for that all of those families that lost those precious babies in Texas through the school shooting. But but here we are uh, once again. This is not the first time. So we have had some solutions to some things that they keep trying to figure out. How can we keep this from happening? But yet they're leaving the Lord out. One of the greatest things that that was was helping the school system was when prayer was in the school. What did they do? They took that out. And what am I saying? There are some things that those the believers have that I believe that God is downloading into you in your uh, a sphere of influence, wherever God has placed you, whatever your career path is, whether you are king, you're a minister in the marketplace, or whether you're a priest, a minister that, that is in the pulpit or in the five-fold office, pastor, apostle, preacher, teachers, and evangelist, whatever your role is, whether it's a natural role or whether it's a spiritual role, you have created the ability to wherever you are, wherever problems exist, that you have the answer to that. So when we are talking about creativity, God the Father, the I am, the I am, he is the master of creativity. He created the heavens and earth in seven days. His creative ability was so phenomenal. Everything that was needed for man, everything that was needed for our uh, sustainability, everything that was needed from our birth to our end, everything that was needed from the beginning of time to the end of this world time, God created in that garden. and then. Uh, uh, he strategically and systematically caused everything to operate. The sun don't bump into the moon. The moon don't bump into the earth. The earth uh, uh, orbits as it's supposed to be, bringing us the different seasons. He has orchestrated and strategically and systematically placed everything into his position. He, he was the one that created. And because we are in the God class, we have his DNA. And especially those who have accepted Jesus Christ again, we have been given a special endowment with creativity, how to create solutions to the world problems and, and to all of the social ills that is in this world so that we may not have to, we don't have to go through seven and 10 step programs and, and go through substitutionary, uh, um, what we call substitutionary, um, uh, what I want to say, come on, Spirit. substitutionary solutions, hallelujah, uh, and that will help them get to the next level of deliverance. We can come up with the solution of how these people could be set free, how uh, challenges and, and so, uh, problems can be solved in a snap of the button. Glory be to God. And I'm saying what would take somebody uh, three years to do, God can take a child of God down low through the Holy Spirit, give revelation and give a plan to them when they seek the Lord and say, Lord, this is a problem. This is a passion of mine. I want to be a part of the solution. What is it? And God in three Three days can give you something that it takes somebody three years to do. Do you all understand what I mean? Because we have that as our DNA. And it's time for the church to understand it and start believing this. But if we don't believe it, we believe we just on the same level as the world, then that's why we're going to get the solutions that the world gave. Look at Daniel. His life was exemplary, exemplary, and an example of how someone could go into prayer. Find out a solution to the king's problem, to the one who is in charge. He has this dream that plagues him. He got on payroll the people who are supposed to be able to give him the answer, which is the astrologers, the soothsayers, and they come from a demonic system. So although they say that they can tap into this craft and bring results, it was not the results <coughs> that was the answer for the king. They said, there's a person that we know that can interpret dream. And the king said, call for him. <clears throat> Excuse me, they called for Daniel. And Daniel said, king, would you have decreed that all the wise men be, um, be executed because none of them could interpret your dream? King is very hasty. Just give me a minute. I'll come back to you in the morning and I'll come with an answer. Daniel was convinced that he could get to God 
and get the answer to this dream? How can somebody know what somebody dreamed except it be the, the power of God working through him to reveal that? And this is what I'm talking about, operating beyond. Now, the astrologers were able to do some of their crafts through the, through the demonic spirits, but they couldn't do what Daniel did. <clears throat> Glory be to God. And to now the point, Daniel, bring this king, the interpretation of the dream uh, ends his torment about the dream. And then what happens? Daniel is elevated. And I'm saying that there is nothing that God couldn't do for Daniel that he can't do for us. And we got to believe that we're able to operate in this way. And that's why we haven't had the results, I believe. And so God has been the creator. And Jesus, when He we accept Jesus, we become his sons and daughters. We are his posterity and his offspring. And we are having a portion of that creative attribute. Hallelujah. This is fact. It's known by Satan. And therefore, he does not want us to have this creative ability because he doesn't have it. He cannot create. He only mimics and he only duplicates. Glory be to God. He only tries to uh, uh, replicate what God has already created to fool people and to be subtle again. And so he knows that if we operate in the spirit, if we listen and obey the Holy Spirit, it will transform my mind and we will begin to have exploits done on behalf and God's name will be glorified. Hallelujah. We, when we talk about creativity, we are talking about your ability to transcend, to go beyond the traditional, the traditional, the same old, same old ideas, rules, patterns, relationships, and, and the like. Being able to create meaningful new ideas, new, uh, new forms, new methods, new interpretations, new relationships, new insights, new ideas, and new concepts. Glory be to God. When we walk after the spirit and allow him to lead us, he will give us these things. So have we been asking for it though? Some of you got problems that exist right now in your own home. You don't know how to reach that, that, uh, that child. You know you raised them, right? You know you gave them everything that they necessary that should, should uh, help them to be thankful and a, and a good, moral, um, God-fearing child but they done went the opposite way. It's doing some things that <clears throat> you thought they never would do. And you want to know why, what happened. And God has a solution to how you can reach that wayward child, how you can reach that one who said they don't want to have nothing else to do with God. He could give you an uh, uh, insights, grandparents, of how to raise your grandchildren, glory be to God, in the absence of their parents. You see what I'm saying to you? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the church's role, I want to say, just in sum, to sum it up, the church's role to exist in this earth, having creative thoughts and establishing creative systems. That's all I'm trying to get to, that we will be the answer to the world's problems and to their issues and to their solution and, and have solutions. This will cause the world to then stand up and take notice, not of us, because that ain't the end game is to put ourselves on display, but they will come to seek the God that we serve. And when they ask about how uh, did you get this answer? How did you know? How did you create this? Uh, what means did you uh, start doing this? Don't go to give them your resume, give them your techniques of how you uh, research and it is this Point them to God. Say, I went in my prayer closet. Ah, glory to God. And I asked the Lord to give me a solution to this thing that has been plaguing our world, plaguing our system, and, and, and plaguing uh, our youth and, and whoever, whatever it is. I asked the Lord because it was a passion of mine. It was bothering me. And if it was bothering me, uh, per, whatever is bothering you, and you go to bed thinking about it. You wake up thinking about it. You keep saying somebody should do something about it. It's a great possibility, more greater than and than not, is that that you're supposed to be the one that provide a solution uh, to that, <clears throat> or that is something you should be pursuing that God called you to do. Because why? It's a burden on your heart, and why you're a gift to this world. The people of God. 
We're a gift to this world. The world don't believe it. The world hate us. The world wishing us away. They don't want us to be here. They talk about us narrow-minded. Uh, uh, um, what do I want to say? Narrow-minded, trying to run everybody's life Christian people. We're not. If we didn't care about you, we were, we were going by our business, and you don't want us to do that. We are the salt of the earth, and we are the light of the world. Hallelujah. And light is the only thing that can dispel darkness. Hallelujah. Darkness cannot comprehend light, but light can dispel any amount of darkness, no matter how dark it is. And so we're supposed to be the lighthouse that is set up there on the hill. And what the Bible said, you cannot be hid. They may want to pluck your light out, but they realize how crucial having a lighthouse out on the dark sea is to bring people home safely. And there are people, you all, out here on life's ocean. In the dark, the devil is rocking their boat to and for trying to drown them and take them under before they understand or come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we are the ones that are supposed to shine the light. And if we keep the lighthouse shining brightly, it can bring a, a, a sailboat a home. They may not know what area. All they do is follow the illumination of that lighthouse and they will be home safely. And that's what the devil don't like, but he can't do nothing about it. So creative beings, come on, creative believer, get into your closet. I'm talking from, from me on down. Let's get it to our closet. Let's ask God and the Holy Spirit. He will reveal it. That's what I'm saying. He said he would. He's the revealer. Glory be to God. So when we're talking about um, uh, creativity, we talk about getting this devil portion of it. A lot of us have had some creative abilities and doing some things, but it's time for another level, y'all. Another level, another devil. And what we are dealing with, y'all, I can't tell y'all. And to all those, we keep continue. We see these stories in the news over and over again, and, and they're on our mind momentarily. And we come together, we rally together, we pray, we send well wishes out. And within a couple of days, we don't forget it's the next story on the news. And I'm saying those people who are dealing with that are going to be dealing with some of those issues for years to come. And we need to say, hey, Lord, how can we reach out to these people? How can we help them? Yes, prayer is good. But there are some people in that vicinity or where they are, and we are praying that God will send the believer their way to help them get through, hallelujah, this struggle to they're able to stand up on their feet and when so they're able to see that God did not bring this destruction, never he never brings fatality and all of this, what happens is the devil is loose because somebody is prohibiting God to come in and inviting him in. Hallelujah. Calamity, the thief, uh, M-O, is to kill, steal, and to destroy. And who is the thief? John chapter 10, verse 10 said, the, the devil is the thief. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But the Lord it's the opposite. He come to give life and give it more abundantly. He's moving in invisible ways all the time. He's trying to do everything to keep fatality at people from doing. It. And it says God's hand is not shortened that he cannot say. Neither is his ear heavy that he's not hearing the cry of the people. But what's happening is their sin and their transgression and their, <clears throat> their hard heartedness toward him is the one that keep them keep the Lord far. And when God is far, the enemy knows that. And he has a, the hedge is down and he has a foothold in and he comes in and bring these things. And then at the end, when he's finished and he's done, he lies as he always done from the beginning. He lies and tell the people to accuse God because this is God's word. And it's not God's word. We started with craziness, like with, with the, catastrophe weather patterns. What do they call it? The act of God. Hallelujah. Why? Because they want, the devil wants people to blame God when a tornado comes through a town and tear it up. So that why it could just draw people closer, uh, further away from God. The thing that is, that mostly draw people away from the Lord, even those who've been Christian believers. I heard a man who, who doddered uh, uh, died from fitting on, said his daddy was a preacher and now he done lost all faith in God because where was God when his daughter died? That was not God's hand that got into that young man that, 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 that gave her the
those drugs. That was the demonic spirit in him working through him. And when we try to get the young people into the church, they said that's old folky. We don't want our children to have nothing to do with God. But when the devil says, okay, good, now they're mine, and he start using them, and then they do evil, then we blame that God is not good, and he's always good. Hallelujah. He'll orchestrate everything in life to save a life. And sometimes we just won't hear. And what he has to do, he has to give you over to whatever your will is and let you follow that. But to every choice is a consequence. And I'm I'm saying uh, that uh, sometimes we don't know all, we don't see all. We just got to believe and keep our faith in God because the time that people need God the most in their lives is the time that the devil say, get angry with God and don't trust and believe him. And why? Because he wants to bring them further down into grief, further down into despondency, further down. And he don't want them to ever see the help that they need, truly need. He wants to keep them away from the help that will get them further and get them through it. Amen. So uh, in, in this time that we're talking about creativity, God wants, um, he said it's time uh, for some to come out of box thinkers. He wants people who's going to be movers and shakers. He said he wants us to begin to start to ask again for the downloads, just like Adam received when he was in the garden to name all of the animals, to name Eve, and to know just what to do to uh, multiply and replenish the earth like the Garden of Eden. Today, God is looking for strategists. He's looking for inventors. He's looking for trailblazers. He's looking for influencers. He's looking for problem solvers. He's looking for solutionists. He's looking for people who are critical thinkers. He's looking for those who are able to have to, to have conflict resolution. He's looking for radicals. He's looking for trendsetters, and he's looking for crazy thinkers. Now, that may not sound right, crazy thinkers, but that means crazy meaning it sounds crazy to the world because it's so far out there, but it's not far out there in regarding to the Lord. All things are possible to them that believe. Crazy thinkers, and he's looking uh, to uh, looking for some water walk walkers like Peter, defying natural laws, hallelujah, doing something that is not supposed to normally be done, hallelujah, uh, but transcend, transcending all of those patterns of belief that man is incapable of this. But we understand that we were created in God's image and in his likeness. And when we are born again, we get that, that, that power of God working in and through us to do things that the world said, how did they do that? Amen. So we started out, we talked about Noah, how he get, he was creative in building the ark. We talked about uh, the creativity of uh, the, the children of Israel when they were um, given a decree by Pharaoh that no longer would they be given straw to make bricks, but their tally of bricks should not decrease. And they supposed to make as much as they did before. He didn't know how they were going to do it. He, but he, all he said is that you're not going to be supplied the straw. They had to go into creative mode. They looked all over Egypt, didn't find no straw, but they came up with an alternative and they began to continue to make the bricks. And then we also talked about the the creative ability and the wisdom that Solomon was given, he had to be creative with trying to figure out the answer to find out the truth of who was telling the truth, that mother, whose son that was. And when he gave that answer, hallelujah, it was the right answer. So now we're going to pick up today talking about Jacob and Joseph. So if you could turn to Genesis chapter number 30 and verse number 22, Genesis 30. And verse number 22, glory be to God. Genesis 30 and 22, hallelujah. And you all know this specific story. This story is of Joseph who had a dream. He was he was Jacob's uh, uh, youngest son and Jacob loved him. And uh, he told his father and his brothers a dream that he had a dream that they were bowing down to him, et cetera, et cetera. They did not accept that. And uh, envy was against Joseph from his brothers, number one, because he was his father's favorite, and number two, that he dared to tell his eldest brothers that they would bow to him one day. But because people don't believe it, 
what you say because they don't believe you are who you are does not negate the, the fact. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so, so then we, uh, uh, um, verse 22, and God remembered Rachel and God hearkened to her. I'm at Genesis chapter number 30, verse 22. And God hearkened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and she bare a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. And we know that uh, Jacob had two uh, wives, Leah and Rachel, who were sisters. He was he was tricked uh, by his father-in-law um, uh, and he gave him Leah instead of Rachel, who he worked for. But anyway, let's continue to go. And she conceived the son and and said, take, he has taken away my reproach to verse 24. She called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, send me away that I may go into my own place and to my country. So in other words, he worked for Jacob all this time. First of all, Jacob promised the, the youngest daughter to Joseph if he would work for him for seven years Joseph did that when it was time to deliver uh, Laban, his father-in-law tricked him. And because the, the, the uh, blessing was supposed to flow on the eldest first, he knew that when he made the pact with, with uh, Jacob. But what did he do? He sent the eldest daughter in there. And Jacob didn't know until the morning that he was laying with the wrong woman. And so he said, you have tricked me. He says, I am in love with Rachel. I, what I need to do, he said, work for me another seven years. He did that. Finally, he was given uh, Rachel to wife, but now he had had children by both Rachel and uh, by Leah. And now Rachel was uh, uh, his, his prize, the one he wanted. She was barren. She couldn't have kids, but now her daughter, her, her sister is having all these kids and God looked upon her for that in verse number 22, open up her womb and then she could see and she could see Joseph, which we're going to talk about later. And um, and she said, uh, and, it, and so when um, he's coming to labor now, Jacob has gotten sick and tired of all of uh, the, uh, the trickery of his father-in-law. He has worked for this man and made this man rich by his creative ability, by his strategies, by the work of his hands. And now he is saying to him, I have done all that you needed to do. Now send me away so I can go into my own place, into my own country. I could take my, my kids, take my wives, verse 26, and I could so, and whom I serve, let me go for you know my service, which I've done for you. You know, I've been treating you well. You know, I've done what I needed to do. You are better off because I've been here because of my creativity. I have made you wealthy. Now let me go. Uh, 27 said, and Laban said to him, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, Terry, for I have learned by experience. So he's learned over time. I know, I know why I'm being blessed. I learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of you. The only reason I'm being blessed as well, because of what you are doing here and how you are handling the business. <laughs> and that's what they should be saying about us. We should be uh, on these jobs and they cannot uh, find the answer to why this don't work. They've been working on this project and it's not coming to pass. And here come you and, uh, and you ask the Holy Spirit because you're a good steward over your job. Say, Holy Spirit, give me the answer to this. They've been searching for this answer. They can't balance. They can't come up with this solution and the Holy Spirit will do it for you. And then they say, how did you do that? Why? And you say, hey, I, I told, asked the Lord. And then verse 28, and he said, <clears throat> appoint me my wages and I will give it. And so, so his father-in-law said, whatever it is now that I should pay you, just stay with me just a little more longer and, and I'll pay you whatever you want me to pay. And he said unto him, thou knowest how I serve you and how Thy cattle was with me, for it was little which the, you had before I came. Before I came, you didn't have much. But after I have been here and bought my uh, uh, my gift and my talent here, been creative, you have increased <clears throat> to a multitude. And the Lord bless you since my coming. And now when when shall I provide for my own house also? So I have done, done things for you. Then when is it my turn? That's what he's saying. <laughs> 
as some of you, <clears throat> you have been doing, you've been prospering next that company, you have been asking them, when am I going to be promoted? Everybody all around, you've been promoted and they have uh, ad, have attended to, to not promote you, keep you in the background, sometimes for discrimination reasons, sometimes because they just don't want you to succeed. But if God blesses you, they cannot hinder you. Glory to God. And he said, but I want to go away. And so then verse 31 said, and he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, and he said to him, don't give me nothing. He says, if thou would do this thing for me, I would again feed and keep your flock. But we're going to make a long story short. So then uh, verse number 20, 32 said, I will pass through all the flock today. I'm going to remove all the speckled, the spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats. And of such shall be my hire. That's going to be my pay. Um, whatever comes out of the cattle that is speckled, spotted, brown cattle, uh, those are going to be what you're going to pay me. So shall my righteousness answer for me in the time to come when it shall come for my hire before your face. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goat and brown among the sheep, thou shall be counted stolen with me. So if they just regular ones and I come to try to claim those, they'd be considered stolen. I'm going to have all of the, um, what they want to call exceptions, if you will. Layman said, behold, I would, it might be according to do your word. He agreed. And he removed that day. That he goes, so now here comes Jacob, creative uh, thought pattern. Because normally sheep comes in that's regular. Rarely are they speckled, spotted, brown, and ring struck. And so I believe that his father-in-law thought he had him once again. Oh, that's going to be his way. Just going to be very little because most of the sheep that's coming forth, they're going to be like the regular sheep. That's mine. If he tried to take any of them, that's going to, he'll be considered robbing me. He has already agreed to that. We have made a deal and that's what it is. So if we go down in the store. I'm not going to continue to read that, but you all, you all can continue to read <clears throat> that that whole 30th chapter <clears throat> and how Jacob uh, began to be creative. And what was he doing? I believe he got the download. He learned how to breed these cattle. And to the point at the end when what happened is the ones that came out spotted, speckled, ring stripe were in abundance. So Jacob had so much wealth when he left his father-in-law. His father-in-law became angry. Why? Because he thought he had him again. But then he said no. And then what Jacob did, took all his wives, his children. He took all of his increase now from, his, from the strategies that he created of breeding them. Hallelujah. And it worked for his behalf and he walked away wealthy. You see the creative ability and God is no short of his working in the Old Testament than he is now. Matter of fact, we have more than they had, which is the Holy Spirit in us. And that Holy Spirit in us is the one who reveals. He gives, uh, he shows us uh, hidden mysteries and he gives us these creative abilities. So that's one story. And then we go to the story of Joseph and in the same book, but we are in the 40, 40, uh, let's see, the 41st chapter. Now, this same story continued because remember, Rachel's son was Joseph. Now we got Joseph who uh, Jacob is old, his dad is old, and Joseph is his favorite, et cetera, et cetera. He has this dream and they don't believe Joseph's dream. And so what happens is his brothers and them, they plot and they scheme against Joseph, and uh, and they go back and tell his father that Joseph is dead. They kill um, a kid, put the blood, because uh, Jacob's eyesight is dim now, put that blood on them. Glory be to God. And, and, and they tell him that he's dead. And Joseph, I mean, and Jacob bewails his beloved son, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The story goes on. Joseph went through a series of ups and downs. Seesaw, a seesaw 
experiences in life. One minute he's so, he's in the pit, uh, thrown in there by his brothers, uh, being sold to the slaves, taken to Egypt, then being elevated because of his ability, then being uh, schemed against against Potter's for his wife because he wouldn't lie with her and go against his God. And now he's thrown into the dungeon and he continues to have the audacity, the hope to believe that the dream that God says what happened is going to come to pass. And some of you, you have lost the ability to dream again. You have lost your audacity to hope again because why something didn't happen on your timetable. It didn't happen when you thought it was and you think God done forgot about you and you just um, put that dream up on the shelf. The dust is collecting. The vision is just up there. You, you stop writing about it. You stop strategizing of how this vision is going to come to pass. And you think God's supposed to do everything. It is a man heart that devises his plan, but God then comes on when you got your plan and he directs your steps. He gives you divine directions of which step to take next, what to do next. And both some of us, because of a delay, it didn't happen on that timetable. What we've done, we don't put it on the shelf and we haven't revisited. And I speak to somebody today, get it up off the shelf, revisit it. It is not too hard for you. If it was from God, the vision is to speak and not lie. It is for an appointed time. If God said it, it will surely come to pass. So here, uh, no man can disannul what God has ordained. And so God ordained uh, Joseph to be the one that would raise up and not only be a blessing to Egypt and Potiphar, but would save his whole household. Did it happen? Absolutely. And what? how did Joseph do? Joseph was so creative that he changed the entire economy of Egypt. He came and he gave Pharaoh what to do in what seasons. And I got to say, give credit to him because why? Uh, <clears throat> because here is, is this man who was in charge listening during one of the crucial times of of Egypt's economy. And if he made the wrong choice, the people would look at him. But during a crucial time, he put this trust in this Joseph and his plan. Um, and then, uh, let's see, uh, we had 40, chapter 40. No, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, Genesis 40, first chapter. Um, so the Pharaoh is, I mean, he's having this dream. He don't understand it. Once again, here's uh, someone who's able to determine the dream, uh, verse 17 in chapter number 40. Um, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, in my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, and they were very ill, favored and lean flesh, such as I saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill favored as at the beginning. So I awoke and I saw in my dream and behold, seven ears came up in one stock full of good and behold seven ears withered thin and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears and I told this unto the magicians but there was none that can declare it unto me so they went to the worldly system they tried to get the answer they went to the doctors they went to the organizations and said what do we do about this disease that's running rapid what do we do and I went to all of my musicians and I went there, but they could not tell me what this was. And verse 25, and Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has shown Pharaoh what uh, he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years and seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one is one interpretation. So in other words, he, he was dreaming about fat and lean. He was uh, dreaming about uh, ears of corn being good and then the other ones being bad and then the bad came and ate up the good so what was it saying joseph is giving him the interpretation of it and he says in and verse 27 and the seventh thin and ill favored kind that came up after them are seven years and the seven empty ears 
Glory be to God. Give me a minute here. And the seven empty years blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. So you're going to have seven good years and you're going to have seven bad years. That's what he's saying. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showed unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten. So all of that that you, uh, all of that increase and surplus that you have, and you shine and dance, oh, we are doing good. The economy is doing good, man. We got plenty put up in store. Immediately after those seven years is over, here come a famine that is going to be coming to the land. That's what he's saying. And it's going to consume the land until the land going to forget that we just had seven good years. Don't that sound familiar, y'all? Glory be to God. We get out of one crisis. Everybody's shouting and dancing, and we're glad that we're out. And before you know it, here comes something else coming. Glory be to God. Let's continue to read. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason that that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. So that famine is going to be, when it comes, the, the prior years were good, good. But then when this comes, this, was, this is going to be very grievous. And for that dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part. So he's giving him instructions. So he's going, where is he getting all this from? I believe from the download from the Lord. He's giving him a creative way um, to be able to save um, the, the, the land and to save the people in Egypt and in the same way to be able to eat when it's supposed to be a famine. That's at the end. I'm, I'm moving ahead for the sake of time. And so he's telling them. And so God is giving him this creative ability and giving him a strategy. And not only a strategy, a plan. He's got a plan in place. And he says, and let, he, he's telling them, let Pharaoh do this. This is what he's telling him. I'm giving you my advice now. Do this. Let and appoint the officers, let them take the fifth part of the land in the seven years that you got good. Let them take the fifth part, let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the city. Don't you devour, don't you eat it, store it up, and the food shall be for store to the land against the seven years. This is for what you're storing up in your good years is going to sustain you in the years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt that the Lord, the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto the servants, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the spirit of God is? In other words, can we find anybody greater than this man who God dwells in? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as you are. I don't have to look for nobody else. You are the man. And I'm saying the, the, the anointing of God is on the people of God's life should be to the point that we are operating in creativity. We operating and we are solutionists, trend, trendsetters, uh, uh, trailblazers. We set the pilot program. It works out. They put us the head of the project. The project is completed. And they start recognizing this church, the church of Jesus Christ, they is something to them. Because when the problem exists, they take it, they handle it, and then the outcome is great. And I believe that that's what God wants to do. And we're talking about us being creative, not in our own intellect, not in our own education relying on our degrees. We got so many people going back to school. They're not going back to school so much so because they want to. They're going back to boast and to put a degree behind their name so somebody could think they're somebody. But they ain't coming up with no solutions. They're doing nothing no differently. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. They're still operating and just want somebody to recognize them because they are doctorate or whatever. And I'm not negating that. Yes, we're supposed to honor people who do that. But I'm saying, why are you doing it? Are you doing it to be a solutionist? Are you doing it to be a strategist? Are you doing it to solve problems? Or are you doing it to be full of pomp and circumstance? And so I'm saying that Daniel, whatever, whatever he said, they were able to recognize that God is with this man. I'm the king and didn't come up with this. My musician, 
magicians didn't come up with this. My wise men didn't come up with this, but it takes this guy who, who I had put in prison, who now is up and giving us a plan to save the whole economy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So that's what I, I'm not going to go too much further into that. People of God, God wants us to be part of the solution. The church is the most powerful institution beyond popular um, belief that we're not, that we are those crazy people that need to be put under, to put out and shut up. We, they need to be shut down and to be shut up. Hallelujah. We are the most powerful institution that ever exists in the world. The Lord says to Peter, by the truth that you just said, that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, Peter, thou art, your, your name is Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the very gates of hell would not be able to uh, uh, <clears throat> prevail against it. The church is here and it's here to stay. Glory be to God. And I am saying to you, people of God, you got some creative juices on the inside of you that God wants to resurrect. He wants to bring to the forefront. He wants your influence in the world to increase. He wants us to start being these problem solvers, etc. And so that is the end of creativity. And I'm going to go over these uh, last two very quickly. And now also in regard to creativity, God said this is the year, the double portion of energy and agility. Never before the Satan is trying to wear out the saints of God, both spiritually, physically, and emotionally. He wants us to be tired in our emotion, tired of dealing with things, don't have no solution, poor mental health, all time high, making the Christian believer not uh, having the mind of Christ, but having the mind of the world. And they can't cast down imaginations and every high thought because the mind has been bombarded with, with, with imagery of failure, imagery of, of this is the best it's going to get, imagery of a, a fatal end. And we, we have not had the mind of Christ to see ourselves through the lenses of the word of God, the lenses of, of just knowing who we are and whose we are, the authority and the power that we have being in Christ Jesus. You're not doing it in yourself, but you're in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit is in you to, to reign and to rule. Is there a king in you? And the answer is yes, but the king has fallen asleep. The king has, has saw a different outcome. Glory be to God. And so God is ready to give us a double portion of energy and agility. Turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Oh, glory be to God. I'm about to end you all. Stick with me for a very few minutes. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter number 40. Isaiah chapter number 40. We're going to start at verse number 29. Glory be to God. Um, That's verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, what kind of God? The everlasting God who has no beginning in any. The creator. See, there he goes again, talking about creative. The creator of what? The ends of the earth. He faint not, neither is he weary. He doesn't go to sleep, you all. He doesn't get tired and weary and just go into a fainting spell when he's unconscious, unaware of what's going on. There is no searching of his understanding. Let's continue verse 29. He gives power to the faint. So if you're fainting and if you have no strength in your weakness, that's when his strength is made perfect. Gird up yourself, gird up the loins of your mind and of your heart and gain strength. In the name of the Lord, I speak it to be so. God return to us our agility and our energy. Hallelujah both physically and mentally and emotionally, to do your will. He give power to the faint, those who are about to give up. That's what he talked about. To the weak and to them that have no might, what do he do? Increase strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men, they're going to utterly fall. But they, but they, so it doesn't go by age. It doesn't go by uh, um how uh, young you are is how much stronger you can be. It is those that decide that they're going to wait on the Lord. And when you wait on the Lord, what is he going to do? Verse 31, he's going to renew your strength. You're going to mount up with wings as eagles. 
you're going to run and you ain't going to be weary in running and you're going to walk and you're not going to faint. Hallelujah. So those of you who is going to wait on the Lord, you're going to wait for your expectation. You're going to wait on your promise. You're going to trust and believe in him. You're going to look for him and hope in him. And, and you shall uh, change then when you're waiting. You know how the turtles do in the in the cage. Uh, I, I, my brother and them had many turtles before. And I said, them things look like they dead. They just sitting there. I'm like, what is the purpose of that light? And them just what they call basking. And that's why we talking about basking in the presence of the Lord. Stand under his energy light, the light and illumination of the Holy Spirit, just sitting quiet, standing still, waiting, absorbing all of the energy that the Holy Spirit is giving us. That's what the turtle do. And they said it makes his shell harder. It gives him more strength and more agility he, by basking under that light. He, he stands still. You don't see no movement. But something is happening when there is no movement. And some of you, 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 you don't feel any movement. You don't see any movement. And you're getting anxious in that moment. That's the moment that you should stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand there and bask in the presence of God. Uh, 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 meditate in him. Um, um, muse the word of God. Absorb. Hallelujah. And praise the name of the Lord. Absorb yourself in the word of God. And he says, then you're going to renew your strength because you waited on me and, and you're going to have power and you're going to lift up your wings that I've given you. And you're going to mount up uh, as, as eagles mount up, go flying up to the sun. You're going to mount up and you're going to fly and you're getting closer and closer to God. And then you're going to be able to run, not get weary, walk and not faint. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for increasing our agility even in our natural bodies. God, some of us are getting older and the devil wants us to, to um, start speaking. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm just getting old and these things happen. But God, you said that we will mount up with wings of eagles. And Romans chapter 8, verse 11 said, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, then that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, you said that it is able to, Hallelujah. Glory be to God to, to uh, strengthen and to um, and to resurrect these natural mortal bodies. Glory be to God. And I believe it. Our youth shall be renewed like the eagle. And I speak that over your people today. Bring strength back to these bodies. Bring strength back to them feeble knees, to those uh, uh, weak ankles. Bring strength back, hallelujah, to that, that uh, relaxed arm and, and, and all of the limbs, God, that is given out. Hallelujah. Strengthen us again. Help us to know this is our birthright and give us a double portion of agility and strength because there is much work that we have to do and we can't do it with weak bodies. I speak that in the name of the Lord Jesus, that our strength is returning to us now. And, and the Father, hallelujah, glory be to God, is strengthening us with strength in our soul and in our natural body. And then the last one, a double portion of endurance and patience. And let's turn to Job, hallelujah, and we're going to be out, hallelujah. Job chapter number 42, Job 42. We all know the story of Job. We know everything that Job been through, hallelujah, we know that the hedge was bowed down because of his fear. We know that the enemy was walking to and forth, seeking whom he made the vow. The Lord saw him and said, are you considering Job? And his answer was yes, but you know that I can't do nothing with him because you got a hedge around him. Take the hedge down. He'll curse you to your face and die. But Job did not. He did not lose his integrity in God. His children was gone. All his wealth was gone. Everything. That's why I'm saying you better wear these things loosely. You better wear them loosely because the devil knows when you got your trust in them. You claim your trust is in the Lord, but let something happen to your portfolio. Let something happen to that job. Then you get the murmuring and complaining and thinking the words and you start seeing a, 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 a worse end and gloom and doom. Because why? And you all he'll do is touch those material things and he know he got you. But if your trust is in God and your integrity in God, hallelujah, you know that at your end, that God will never let you go down like that. And so then uh, we want a, uh, a double portion of endurance and waiting on God in our test and trial. See, we are all right when things are going well. It's during the TNT, test and trials, that we start to, to falter with the ball, 
fumble with the ball that we've been carrying in the game and making the goals and making the baskets and, and making uh, uh, points. And now that same thing that got us through that now because a test and trial comes our way, we don't have an endurance anymore. In your patience, he says in the word of God, you're going to possess your soul. Don't give up soldier. The, the battle is not to the swift. I mean, the race is not to the swift, neither the battle to the strong. It's about the one who what? Endure to the end. Having started a race and don't endure, you ain't you can't win it that way. You got them. You, you are in this to win it. You're in it to win it. Come on, say it. I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to win it. I'm going to get to my finish line because 99 and a half, it just won't do. Hallelujah, glory be to God. And so then if we look at Job 42 and 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 1,000 yoke of oxen, 1,000 sheep asses. Then also all his children that was gone, he had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of them. He gave them their name. And in all the land, verse 15, were no woman found so fair as the daughters of Job and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. After this lived Job 140 more years and saw his sons and his daughters and his sons' sons, even down to four generations. So look at that. His agility and his energy increased till he saw now his sons and his sons' sons all the way down to four generation. So Job died, what, being old and what? He was full of days. And that's what I'm saying. God, hallelujah, can do for us the same today if you dare to believe. I thank God for all of you who have stuck with Pastor Betty throughout this series. This is your year, your double portion. My question to you, do you dare to believe it? Hallelujah. Do you dare to believe it? God wants to give us a double portion of of, of his spirit, of his anointing. He wants us to operate in a double portion of the supernatural. He wants, I'm trying to give you all, all what we said. Um, before I start, maybe next week's uh, topic, we'll be going over, we'll be going over all of the things uh, that we, we talked about in receiving the double portion, giving a recap of that, and then giving you the declaration. So um, we want to, um, remember that God wants us to operate in the double of everything, double revelation, double of discernment, glory to God, a double of, um, my, I'm trying to scroll through my dot, double of uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He wants a double portion of uh, of strength and might, double portion of love, peace and of joy, double portion of hope. Um, and then we talked about in Peter, uh, how we're supposed to add to our hope, diligence, to diligence, faith, to faith, virtue, to virtue, godliness, to godliness, patience, to patience, uh, then temperance, glory be to God. And then we want our double portion of prosperity. Hallelujah. Come on now, come on. I'm almost finished here. Give me a minute, you all. Hallelujah. That was the lie he's trying to hinder. I told you, you can't hinder nothing here. Go on about your business. Hallelujah. And then a double portion of prudence. Of course, we just talked about double portion of health, success, a double portion of favor, double portion of influence, double portion of honor, double portion of creativity, double portion of energy and agility and a double portion of endurance and patience. And I may have missed some, but that's a lot, isn't it? And if we start operating these things, God, you're going to see uh, the, the church changing this world for Jesus Christ. I so love all of you with the love of Jesus. You remember Pastor Betty tells you all that all the time. And I so mean it, but the Lord God loves you all so much more, more than any human love can come close to or compare with. And so if I would dare not end this broadcast without making an appeal to somebody who do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I wouldn't stay right there. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back, you all. He's coming back soon. And I'm going to keep saying it until he tells me 
uh, to, to stop saying because it is just the truth. Everybody else is telling y'all everything and y'all believe it. And I'm going to keep it telling you because God told me to prepare the people for this last hour and to prepare you. Hallelujah. I got to make you aware of what the end goal is. And that is that we will see the Lord in peace. And then when our eyes shut, whatever time that may be, people are leaving here. Uh, one day you talking to them and they ain't help. The next day they're gone. And I'm telling you, we don't know the day or the hour when God's going to knock, death is going to knock at our door. But we can be for sure. We don't have to be worried. We don't have to be excited. All you need to do is know that when your eyes close, you can be 100% guaranteed that heaven will be your home. How can I do that? You got to make, you see above my head, it says, Jesus is Lord. He is Lord over all. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we can be saved. That's Acts 4 and 12. But by the name of Jesus. You can't be saved by Buddha, uh, Krishna, whatever God that you have named and whatever they're coming up with today, new names. You only can be named uh, be saved by one name, and that is Jesus' name. He was the only one who died. He is the only one who shed blood. He is the only one that God... Uh, have accepted his sacrifice on behalf of the sins of the people once and for all. Hallelujah. He is the only way to the Father. No man can come into the Father except they come through the Son. And if you want to be saved today, you can say, how do I do that, Pastor Betty? I've been just thinking uh, uh, lately about my spirituality, about this whole thing about Jesus Christ. And I come to know that it's got to be something better than this. Life Got to be more than about the sum of the things that we possess and then we just die and that's the end and the cycle continues. It's got to be something greater and better. And I want you to know it is, there is an eternity. Hallelujah. There's an eternity that <clears throat> every man is going to spend eternity in one or two places. The spirit part of you, which is the invisible part, is the real you that is designed from the garden to live forever. Man fell, and that's why we didn't have eternal life. We were supposed to be eternal beings. There was a tree in the garden, and that was the tree of life. We were supposed to live forever. Hell was not created for man. It was created for the devil and his demons. And But, but man, uh, but, but hell has did one thing, enlarged itself, because many have failed to accept the answer and the gift to eternal life, and that's Jesus. Nicodemus, Lord, how can a man see the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said, one way, you must be born again. How can I be born when I'm old? Can I enter into my mother's womb and be born again? No, Nicodemus, that's a fleshly thing. That's the flesh part of you. Your mother and father came together, formed the egg, and you became a living spirit. These bodies are suits that you put on to survive in this earth realm. But the real you was the one I created in the garden. And that was to be in total fellowship with me throughout all eternity. But that's what Adam lost. But now, in order for you to be saved, your spirit man has to be made anew. That's what born again means. Not a natural birth, but a spiritual birth. It has to be made anew. You have to put off that old sinful man and put on the man, hallelujah, that I created you to be in fellowship with God. And all you, could, all you need to do to do that is accept the gift. And what was that gift? The gift that Jesus came to die for, where man was lost without hope in the world, bound to sin and to the satanic force of the devil, who was the prince of power of this air when he was thrown out of heaven. But God came and he made a way from us, way from the beginning. He put enmity between a man's seed and the serpent seed. And man was going to crush the serpent's head and the serpent was going to bruise his heel. And so God made a way for us to be saved, even from the very beginning. And all you have to do is say, I believe, I, I accept that gift. I accept my way to salvation and my access to heaven forever. All I got to do is accept the work, the burial, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and believe in it, make him Lord of my life relinquish control of my own life and turning my life over to him and I will be saved. And you say, well, that's simple, Pastor Betty. I want to do that. How? You could do it right now in a minute or less. Simply say this prayer to me because it's by a believing and confessing, not by anything else. 
of believing. You got to believe it. Now you can't just repeat it after me. You got to believe what you're saying. And then you got to confess Jesus as Lord, Jesus as Lord, Jesus as Lord. So dear Lord, here I am. You know me, you know my life. You know how I've lived. Lord, I admit that I am a sinner and have sinned. But I thank you that you died for all sinners. And you said that if any man come unto you, you would in no wise cast out. Lord, I'm coming to you today. My soul is hungry. My soul is in despair. And I'm coming and asking you, would you come into my life? Would you come and live your life in me and through me? I believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father and that he died for my sin. But on the third day, he was risen again and he is not dead. He is alive, sitting at the right hand of the Father, even making intercession for me and awaiting to welcome me into the kingdom. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life by that confession that I just made and my belief in you. I am now convinced and I know and believe that I am now one of yours. I am saved today. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Live your life now in me and through me, through the glory of God. And let all of these things that Pastor Betty talked about, the double portion of these things, let it rest upon me in the double measure right now in the name of the of Lord Jesus, so that I can now be one of the ambassadors of yours who will now draw others who are not saved, who don't have the understanding like I did, would draw them to Christ so that when we all close our eyes, we will not be fearful of death, but we will say like Jesus, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, grave, where is your sting? But we only there for a temporary time until the second coming of our advent, when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those who are believers and accepted Jesus will then and remain on the earth will be caught up to meet him in the air. Thank you, Lord, now for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. If you said that simple prayer, my brother and sister, guess what you're saying right now? Glory to God, Pastor Betty is so happy for you. You have made the best decision that you will ever, ever make in your whole entire life. I'm excited about that. This is just a initial step. There's other step to spiritual maturity. You are considered a babe. A babe has to do what? Go through the process of growth. He has to grow up the same way spiritually. You are a spiritually newborn babe, but there's other steps for you to grow up spiritually until your roots are strong enough, until you are strong enough to walk on your own. You have to be covered. You need to be connected. There's other things you need to be need to do from this point. Be connected to a church. You need to learn how to read the word. You need to know how to be discipled, etc. And in order for you to do that, you need instructions. Reach out to us at our email at klcc127 yahoo.com. Let us know that I received Christ in the subject. Say I received Christ. What do I need to do next? Even if you at another church, we'll tell you what to do. We'll send you back to that other church. But reach out to us and let us know that you gave your life to the Lord through this broadcast. It's the way of us measuring our effectiveness for the kingdom and to keep a record of your visit. And then also we want to be a tool, an instrument to get you planted into the right soil. Because a seed um, that you plant, a baby plant, has to be planted in good soil. So they could get the sun and the light and the water. Then it can grow up to a mature plant. And you have been planted, hallelujah, today in the body of Christ. But you got to grow. And we don't want any weeds coming and choking the life out of the plant before it has a chance to grow. <clears throat> so <clears throat> if you're not connected to the church, we want to invite you to come and join Kingdom Life Christian Center. This is a warm place of welcome. This is a, a powerful place of place of conducive to your maturity and your growth and we will love 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 to have you but if kingdom life is not the place for you what we will do we'll reach out to our colleagues wherever you are located in other states and we will try to plant you in bible believing four gospel churches where jesus christ center focus and the word of god is the highest authority so that those weeds won't come and choke out 
the life in you and you won't come, you won't be again to learn um, wrong teaching, but you will be planting in good soil. And we'll try to reach out to our colleagues if kingdom might, if not to place, this is good soil now, you will get what you need here, but we want you to be fully convinced in your own mind. I would love to have you, but it's not about that. It's about Pastor Betty getting you into the kingdom. And that's why I want you to reach out to us so we can measure our metrics of how uh, effective these broadcasts are in bringing people to the cross. Glory be to God. I so love you all with the love of Jesus. And as I tell you all the time, have a fantabulous rest of the Sunday. Relax, relate, release. Enjoy your Memorial Day. Keep it safe. Keep it holy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And remembering those who fought for us, pray for them because we're praying for those who are not saved, who fought. You were a soldier in the natural army, but God wants to make you a soldier in this army. Why don't you come on his side? Glory be to God. You, you know about the training. He wants to use you. Hallelujah. Every man that is born was born with a God ordained purpose, whether you're following it or not, whether you accept him or not. It does not negate that when you were formed him, he knew you before you were forming your mother's belly. He gave you a specific assignment and a purpose to fulfill. We want to make sure you're doing that. So we salute you once again, veterans. And for those of you who are not saved, why don't you consider being saved today? I love y'all with the love of Jesus. Have a fantabulous rest of the Sunday, a good holiday, and go through next week with your eyes open, your hearts, hearts um, prepared to hear the, your ears open to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, your hearts open to receive what God wants you to have, hallelujah, so that you could begin to have operating this double portion. We love you all. I am Pastor Betty, senior pastor and founder of this very great church located on the northwest side of Chicago, Illinois. We are virtual right now. And we ask you to come and join. If you want to be an e-member, you don't have to be in Illinois. And we are opening it up because we are believing God for other satellite um, locations for Kingdom Life Christian Center. And some of those may have to be through virtual. And we are uh, inviting you, if you feel led, to come and join us virtually as an e-member. But there's things that uh, we might have to take care of in order for you to become a, that member. So you all got my email momentarily we'll be putting up our ways that you could donate to the ministry as well we will be putting up the ways you can follow us on our social media platform subscribe to our channel follow us on facebook follow us on youtube instagram and pinterest and then uh, come back here next sunday for another powerful word of god through our kingdom life christian center online church connection via our youtube channel i love you people of god Hallelujah. And pray for me as I continue to pray for you. Let's pray for all of the people that are suffering from the loss. We know uh, the current one has been those in Texas, but people prior to that, there have been other stories where people are suffering all over the world. And we're praying that the Lord Jesus would come and heal every heart, heal every wound. And I'm praying that they will not be drawn from God through the tragedy, but be drawn to God because he is their only true reliable help and source in this last hour. You all be blessed and we'll talk to you all soon. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless people of God.